Welcome to this session uh, titled Next Steps Session. Uh, my name is Marcia. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm an associate artist and co-facilitator on this session. Hi, my name is Marilyn. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm also an NYT associate and co-facilitator of this session. We're really fortunate to have two um, current NYT members with us, um, most important people in our room. So we'll let them introduce themselves to you also. I'm Kira Golightly. Um, my Hi. pronouns are she, her. And yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Hi, my name is Dalumuzi Moyo. Um, pronouns he, him. And yeah, same, excited to be here. Fantastic. Um, obviously the, the, the video is aimed um, to help with our next steps if we weren't successful um, this year. Um, what advice would, would any of you give to anyone who has auditioned and perhaps wasn't successful this year uh, at, at becoming an, you know, an NYT member? What, what advice would you give? Um, the advice I'll give is just don't stop. Um, I think I can speak as well for Kira as well saying like, we've all had failed auditions so many times it, it's what comes with being an actor it's pretty normal for you to have fit, failed auditions um so it's just not to stop really yeah absolutely i agree with that um persistence is key and we actually love to see that demonstrated in auditions and you'd be surprised the amount of people that don't get in on the first time myself included, um, confession, <laughs> hands off anyone. Um, and you're still able to feel really fulfilled on your NYT journey. Um, so yeah, just to keep going, uh, find other means in the meantime to keep that passion alive, be it watching things, joining other youth group, and yeah, just uh, find other people that are also like-minded and interested in the arts. I think as well, the NYT hub really helps because that makes you part of the community and gives you lots of information and ideas and lots of processes that you can go through that will really influence your journey forwards. And as you know, look out around you, see what's around you in your local area, because chances are there's something hiding somewhere that's gonna really um, make you so creatively joyous. And that's what, it, what it's about. And it doesn't just have to be a physical thing. It could be an online group. I've heard about so many online groups bringing young people together uh, to, to create. So keep creating. And I, I don't know about all of you. One of the things that I know in all the years that I've been with NYT that's been said to me by members is that actually they realised that the fourth time they tried and got in was the right time for them. It was the right moment in their life for them to make the most of, of the potent opportunities that are on offer. And they realize that actually that first time wasn't, perhaps wasn't right. And they potentially wouldn't have made the most. Definitely, definitely. In the moment, it can feel a bit like, eh, that's a bit cliche, or you're just telling me what I want to hear. But actually looking back, you go, oh, at that age or at that point of my life, I wasn't quite ready to, to take on the four opportunities. I might not have, have gone as far as I have now. As I said, there's so many stories I think that we all have. And the fact that we've got NYT members here when I didn't get in the first time is absolutely brilliant because, you know, it shows we're, we're all the same. You know, there's, there's no one luckier than, than anyone else. But the process is really important. And this session, what's important about it is showing you some of the ways to prepare, um, because sometimes it can just be that, um, preparing and knowing in a way what you wish to present as your as your as your sense of self um, in every part of the process of, of auditioning whether that's a live audition whether that's um, an audition that's a self tape a recall that, that's online it's about making the best of that moment and that opportunity I, I'd like to ask one question what's the thing that you remember about the process of auditioning that would be something that's a real gem to give to people for them to think about so what's the thing that you do? I think for me, um, I think when, when the audition process started to click for me and I think when it became less of a 
not a chore as such, but not something that I dreaded so much was when when I started to think about it as actually it's just an opportunity to perform. Um, so especially lately, I think before I've been always thinking, oh, what do they want to see from me and how can I bring this and how can I do this when actually it's a good opportunity to do a bit of acting in front of people. And I think the more I've started to enjoy that and think I'm doing a three minute little play for someone and I've got a captive audience, you know, they have to sit there and watch me. Um, yeah, finding the joy in it, I think it's really helped me. And I think it translates as well. I think if you've got an audience who's who's watching you going, that they're having a really good time up there. I mean, what more could you ask for? That's That's what everyone wants to see, I think. So yeah, that'd be my little thing. That's a great piece of advice. Tally, what about you? Um, I'd say, one, having fun. Um, I remember, like, I'd have auditions where I was so analytical in terms of how I'm going to do this text, how I'm going to do this, that I just ended up not enjoying the whole process. And it showed, that, you know, when I stood in front of the panelists, you know, when overthinking comes, that's when the brain freeze comes in. And I kind of just took a step back and just thought to myself, you know what, let me just enjoy it as it is, you know, I think, yes, it's, it's hard for an audition. When an audition comes, you get so excited, but I think just trying to keep the nerves down or if not just using those, that nervous energy, to, you know, to your advantage kind of thing. So yeah, I think once I started having fun, I started show, showcasing myself more. And I think that's also something important is to bring yourself, um, find a text or a monologue that you resonate with you know um i always came in before thinking okay i need to i need to show them that i'm so versatile and i can do this and i can do that but really and truly they just want to see you you know and what you bring to the table um and yeah i, th I think that's kind of the the mode that i've been going with as of late into auditions um and I'd also, I would also want to just, just being candid as well. Like um, I never used to bring my identity on into the auditions. Mm -hmm. um, I think 2020, especially after the Black Lives movement happened, I was, I was very much into, okay, what do I want to do? What kind of work do I want to create? All these questions just started coming in because I was just going for any audition, like just, just bring on the work. I love acting kind of thing. But it got to a point where I was like, what mark do I want to leave? And I think once you really sit with yourself and think to myself and think to yourself, what do I want to do? You start picking the monologues that you like, you know, you'll start picking things that are just going to come naturally to you. And yeah, ever since just done my research, I found uh, some originally from Zimbabwe, I found Zimbabwean plays. And since I've just been using those into most of my auditions and if anything, the way I didn't get a call back I at least got something where people were like, you know what, you, you left a mark in there. And for me, that's that's all that matters kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe Such great points. Yeah. Such great points. I mean, myself and Marcia, we've experienced being on the panel for the auditions. Um, and that it completely shows when someone is just really enjoying themselves and relishing that moment. And we'll kind of look at this later, but taking up that space, when we do live auditions, it's, you know, a lot of the time, sometimes we have school auditions where that is your school. And we'll sit and find that some people are entering that room as if they're in fact entering a new place. They're the guests. When we are, we're the guests. And when it comes to self-tapes as well, you've chosen an environment. Maybe it's your home. You've invited us in. So actually taking that ownership and that power and going, this is me. This is what I have to bring. This is what I would like to show you in this few minutes. And owning it, enjoying it is just, is just everything. And also, you know, those that didn't get in that first time, you've got something ahead of people that are auditioning next. You know the ins and outs. And I don't know, we all learn differently, but I, I have to admit, I'm someone that kind of learns by trial and error. I might not get there that first time, not always, but I might not get there that first time. But I tell you, when I do get there, it's because of the things I've learned. So, yeah. It's, it's interesting that that whole idea of, of being brave and being fearless. Um, we sometimes are, are too inward looking and we, we, we need to just not fear. Because um, yeah. I think we're very, I know I'm very fearful uh, as, as, a, as a performer. Um, I always worry. 
um, and always about things as you said that I just have to let go of because in that moment I just need to own who I am and the space that I'm in and um, and as you said leave your mark I think that's that's so important the young people that have as an auditioner there, there are some young people that have left such a mark on me that it's been joyous seeing them many years later in the company too um it's just it's been quite emotional actually but the one thing we were talking about Marilyn and I were talking about that thing about a live audition or a self tape there's a there's a tendency as we said to be in spaces that you know that suddenly become strange and alien because you're not doing the thing you would ordinarily do in that space and the one thing that always that always you know that always confuses me a little is how we do a workshop on a live session in the morning and then everyone comes to audition, but nothing happens to prepare them to come into the room. And lots of what I've found is lots of uh, recalls. There's no sense of warming yourself, finding yourself and warming this, this, this body and this voice up, this, these tools that we're using. And so just to put something out there that perhaps one of the greatest ways of once you've decided what you want to perform, you've decided the format of your, your audition is to actually look at you and making sure you feel woken up, prepared, uh, and that you feel that you're, you're really um, using and embracing yourself in the best way possible. So we're going to look and potentially giving you some ideas as to how you can warm up. Now, we could warm up forever, but we've got five minutes. That's all we want to spend. Now, we know as, as performers in that five minutes, we need to be released. We need to have no tension, as you said. Um, we need to be like that. That Our plus and minus on a battery needs to be equal. Both sides look already. Everyone's going like this, getting ready. Mm -hmm. So we need physically to be warm because we're bringing the everyday in our body in. And also, if we're sitting and doing a self tap, we need to understand that our, our, the bones of our pelvis are like our feet. And we need to ground in and we need we just need to make sure our body feels everything around us. We also then need to make sure that we're breathing. That's a good thing. It stops nerves. It makes sure we can deliver text. We need to make sure that we're resonant, that we're, we're using the whole orchestra within us to engage uh, the, the, the ideas and the imagery and the emotional journey that we wish to uh, explore. We need to make sure articulate, you know, doesn't matter what we're doing. We want to be understood um, in the best way possible. And then we want to be able to play. Because play is so important in terms of spontaneity, in terms of believability and truth, and, and just having that thing that you said, which is about being brave, being fun, and owning space and place. So let's have a look at this. I don't know about you. You can, everyone can join in. That's fine with me. So here we go. Let's let's see if we can't they literally warm ourselves up in five minutes flat. So let's look at, at posture and, and, and the body first and releasing this, this crazy thing that travels us around the world every day. So what I want you to think about is the place. Look, Kira's already going, oh, yes, yes. Already <laughs> she's noticed that the place where we get the most tension is actually in our shoulders because we walk around with rock sacks and we, we tend to allow gravity to pull us down. So let's very quickly look at that. I want you to imagine, I call this finger a yo-yo finger as it's generally your longest finger. So I want you to really think about stretching that as high as you can and away from the foot. So stretch it as far as you can, even more. Come on, higher, higher. Come on, stretch, 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 stretch. Come on, more, more, more. It's pulling you. Come on, it's pulling you. Then get your other hand. And I want you to play your ribs like a xylophone. Just play them and at the same time breathe. We're going to put breathing and physicality all together simultaneously. And then we'll insert all of the other things very quickly. Even higher. See if you can reach even higher. Even higher, even higher, even higher. Then tap. Then have a good tap around that area. That's it. All around the front, the side, the back, and then let go. Now take a breath and feel what that feels like. Oh, something nice in that in that space now, isn't it? Yeah, right. Let's now we, we've got to do the other side. We can't be we can't be lopsided. So let's go. That finger again, really like like we're pulling it. So really reach, really reach. And remember, whenever you're warming up take care of yourself so tap it tap 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 around it's like you're trying to find all the places because sometimes you forget that places are there that are going to help us breathe and help us be and then give it a good pat now whenever you're doing any kind of physical work take care if something is a little difficult just go to your comfort place okay see if you can reach a bit more though because do challenge yourselves too let go oh except kira your shoulders are going to be a bit tight around here so here we go put your thumbs together Push them towards me, your hands as far as you can. Push your shoulders forward. Come on, even further. Like you want to, you add seat, like you want to push your shoulders forward. Then, then literally leave your sh shoulders there, round the top as high as you can. Pull those fingers up, 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 and then all the way around the back as far as you can. Oh, 
Oh, how's that feel? <laughs> That's quite nice. Do once more. Put your thumbs together because it's really going to see if you can separate everything at the back, all the ribs, pull them apart. But like you want to separate them right and left. And then you want to take your ribs as far away from the floor and your shoulders as you can. And then squeeze them at the back. Oh, oh, how does that feel? Now take a breath. Feeling good? Good. Yeah. Let's see if we can get the breath into the right place. Let's see if we can get a nice breath that's going to really embrace and at the same time physically warm the rest of our body. So I want you to take a breath for me. And what I want you to do, I want you to hug yourselves really tight. As tight as you can. There you go. Put your hands all the way around. And I want you to take a breath through your nose, a tiny little breath, and the rest through your mouth. Can you feel where that breath wants to go? It doesn't want to go into your chest. It wants to go down. See if you can breathe down to your feet. Ready? Here we go. Breathe. Now take your arms away. Remember that place down there. Take a breath in again. Oh, can you feel that place now? It's quite a nice space. So now what I want you to imagine is that you're going to take a breath in. So take a nice deep breath down to your feet. And then I want you to blow out 10 candles swiftly like this. See if you can use that breath and blow out all those candles. Imagine there's 10 of them around the room. Good. And again, right, take that breath in. See if you can blow out 15 candles. Small, sharp breaths right from here in a ha, ha, ha. Really feel that there. That's it. You've got it. You've got it. Now imagine all those 15 candles. This is a nice, slow breath. Are you ready? So take that breath in. Nice, slow breath around the room. Beautiful. And now imagine that all of those candles are flying around and you've got to get, get away from them. So the candle could come over here. You go, ha. And you'd have a ha, that way, a ha that way see if you can imagine the candles and some candles might be going slow <sighs> so see if you can physically have those candles going around see if you can blow them out in different places and spaces so take a nice deep breath blow out 10 quick candles flying around you <sighs> nice now have a nice smooth candle see if you can blow it as it flies around you take that breath in again blow the candle out here we go <sighs> Beautiful. That's nice. Now to stand and take that breath again. Nice. Let's see if we can work on some resonant places. So what I want you to do is I want you to take those breaths. I just want you to tap all up your neck, the back of your head. Give everywhere a nice tap. Wake everything up. Go down to your, your elbows. Go all the way across the backs of your shoulders, all across your chest, all across the back of the neck, the front of the neck, across your jaw, across the top of your mouth, all the way around all of these places and spaces across the top of your head, all of that. Oh, that feels quite alive. Now what I want you to do, you want me to sh shake both feet for me and I want you to hum into your feet. So as your feet shake, what hum would they make? Okay, you ready? Go for it. Shake both feet. Mm -hmm. Hum like really low and resonant. Hum into your feet. What sound do your feet make? Try your left foot, try your right foot. Then try your whole left leg and your whole right leg. What hum does that make? Mm -hmm. See if you can hum into your legs. One leg, mm -hmm. then the other leg. Even if you're sitting down, just swing them in front of you, around to the side, wherever's comfortable. Toe tap your feet on the floor if you're sitting down. Then move your hips. So bounce your hips if you want a chair. What hum do your hips make? Mm -hmm. That's it. And what hum does the, does the bottom of your back make? So circle it around and hum into that place. And imagine you're trying to get the hum of your voice into that space in your body. What sound, what quality does it make? That's it. Get it humming, get it humming. Get it. What about the top and middle? Your clavicle. What about here? What hum is this? What hum are your shoulders? <laughs> what hum is that? It might be quite high. <laughs> you might find a nice range that's just enjoyable. What about your hands? What hum is your hands? Is it really high? Is what what sound do your hands make? What sound? What sound do your whole arms make? What about your whole body's going? Mm -hmm. As one whole body. What sounds can you make? Low sounds, highs, and all the time humming, humming, humming. Then put your chin on your chest and hum into your chest. So a nice low hum. And then slowly, as we lift our heads and eyes up, we're going to lift the hum higher and higher and higher. Keep your eyes on the horizon and then see how high your hum can go. Mm -hmm. High as you can and stop. Now I want you to imagine there's a little bee on the end of your finger. I want you to make this sound for me. Fizz, fizz. Can you make that? Now imagine the bee is here and I want you to make a, a bee sound like this. Fizz. 
<laughs> at your finger. It's quite loud, it's not very loud. Now, when that finger goes up, I want the fuzz to go up. And low, that's it. Play around with your buzzy bee. If it's far away from you, get the voice to be louder. If it's close, quieter. But make sure you're really going to get that bee moving. And make the sound that fizzes follow the bee. Mm. You'll push that sound into a nice shape in your mouth, which means your voice will be making most of the orchestra that you have within you. And you go and zzz, zzz. Then let the bee free. It can go all the way across your room now. It can go really far across your room. It can be quite close to you. It can be down low. It can be high. It's flying around you. Where's it going? And follow it with the sound. Follow it with that feeling of sound. That's it. You've got to follow it with that feeling of sound. Good work as it goes all the way around you. Fantastic. Mm, bring that in. Whew. Now let's see if we can get clear. So do me a favour. Someone shout out a consonant sound. Any consonant. Not a vowel. I like that. So get your hand like this. We're going to chop some consonants, okay? We chop them, the consonants, in four equal parts like this. T, 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 t. Do that for me. And we're going to double each of those four parts like this. You've got it. Then we're going to triple every one of those parts, okay? Brilliant. Then we're going to quadruple it like this. Another consonant sound. Go. Let's put it all together. Oh, that's not very pleasant. It's right at the back. But let's do it together. We're going to do four separate ones and we're going to double each one and then chop them into threes and then chop them into four. Let's do it together with a cut sound. By the way, articulation is hard. This is the most incredible drum kit on the planet. We just need to know where to play it, okay? So think about that. Here we go. Ready? And cut, 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 double it, cut, 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 <laughs> not bad i'll choose one with my lips always work with sounds that come from different places so let's try m. let's do it together we're gonna to go really fast okay here we go and can you feel that warming up now so now how about you do t and th T, th, t, th, t, th, t, th, t, th, th. Ready? Let's have a go. See if we can. Last one. Here we go. It's warming everything up. This one. Go. T, can you feel that now? You can do the whole alphabet if you want and find the sounds that are problematic, but you can feel everything starting to be warm. And how much nicer is that now? Here's where we can play. Think about the first line of the text you're going to present today. I want you to have a look at that line and think, am I going to say it high? Am I going to say it low? Am I going to say it to the other side of my room so the sound is loud and graffitiing the wall over there? Or is it something intimate and close to the screen in front of me? Are you going to do it fast? Are you going to do it slow? But I want you to breathe before you do each version. So think now, five different ways of delivering your text. You ready? Off you go. Five different ways. Nice work. I had so many emotions that day. Mm -hmm. Nice. I had so many emotions that day. Mm -hmm. Nice. I had so many emotions that day. Dalu, can you send it even lower? I had so many emotions that day. Can you celebrate your bass even more? Because you've all got a bit of bass. Can you? I had so many emotions that day. Ooh. Something in that, isn't there? It's about playing. Once our voices are warm, once we understand this orchestra that we're playing with, once we understand this immense drum kit that, that just deals with sounds and quality so beautifully, things can really happen. 
But isn't it just nice to be relaxed and release now? And it doesn't matter what we choose to do. Again, anything that releases you, anything that wakes up breath so you start to breathe and support things, anything that wakes up all those sounds and all of that orchestra, so we're not playing with one part, anything that tongue twisters, anything that wakes up this area for you, and then just play because you'll find a new version, a new way of doing things. And that's when acting becomes playful and quite exciting. And it also sets you up really well for redirection if you learn how just to play with lines and with text. So a very quick warm up, very swift, but I think we've warmed everything. Yeah. It's quite pleasant, <laughs> nice feeling. Marilyn, shall I come over to you for formats of... of yeah, for, so for the auditions. So um, you can have a live audition uh, and that can be a case where you have a workshop either in the morning or in the afternoon sometimes. And then the other half of the day is then the monologue, the monologue time um, where you're given your slots and that's when you do your pieces. You celebrate your pieces, let's say, and you show us who you are in front of the panel. Um, then, so that's one um, way of doing it. Then we also have school auditions. Uh, that works differently where you don't get recalls for those, it's kind of on the day, uh, similar to the live um, auditions where we go to schools and we see them in a workshop with the group and then we see the monologues. And then we also have the Zoom, the, the live uh, auditions on Zoom. <laughs> um, so similarly to this, uh, self-taping as well, um, that's like step one. And then if you get a recall, you'd be called back to a Zoom. So I feel like that kind of nicely leads us on to demystifying the box. Yeah? I agree, I agree, we must. Um, so for self-tapes, self-tapes can kind of feel a bit daunting and that's for the NYT auditions, but also just in general for, for um, life or performances. So what is a self-tape? Um, so a self-tape is just, you know, the clues in the word, a tape, a recording of the self, of you doing your monologue or your duologue, your audition piece. Um, and sometimes it can start off with a kind of introduction, maybe an ident, um, where you say your name, you say where you're from, where you're based, and the piece you're gonna do. Uh, in the case of NYT, that can be a kind of question, a cheeky question like, you know, what did you do today? Or what are you, your favorite one, Marcia, what are you a genius at? <laughs> and so if you get that kind of question what are you genius at don't fret don't be like ah, I'm not a genius at anything literally today what's the first thing that pops into your mind I'm a genius at rocking babies to sleep I'm a genius at today. making my girls laugh nice yeah Kira what are you a genius at I'm a genius at making spiced parsnip soup mm. Mm. Dali I'm a genius at sleeping okay <laughs> Ah, oh, I need a bit of that. And then on the other, on the flip side of that, you could also be asked, you know, what would you need to improve on? And what would you like to improve on? So that could be something like, you know what, I'd love to know more about, you know, investments or sleeping better. <laughs> Anyone got one for that? What would you like to improve I on? I would like to be better at waking up before my alarm or waking up better when my alarm goes off i'm very bad at that okay so you see questions like that that we do give those questions in live sessions uh, and by live i just mean when we're there and we also do that for the self-tape so that's the similarities and yeah it's not it's not a trick there's no way of getting it right it's not about that just what pops to your mind um then that would lead on to the actual uh audition itself and it's really important to think about the beginning, the middle and the end. So that beginning, you've gone from your question, how do we know that you started? Sometimes people can rush through, they've, they've answered their questions and we're off. Give us some time, enjoy that moment. See it as you know the blinds are there, the curtains, and now it's opened. And we can kind of sometimes see in the way you characterize that, that you're about to start, that's always, crisp and tasty the same with the end don't be apologetic and feel like oh, that's me finish enjoy it enjoy that moment and that that goes for all types of formats for the auditions kind of go like mm, done relish it 
and step out, you're done. So back to self tapes. Um, the important thing is to be seen and to be heard. So if you're kind of doing your monologue this whole way, that's not great. Again, if you're too far back, yeah. I'm not able to see the eyes and to, to really connect with what's going on in the speech. And, you know, that cropping your head off or the eye line being too sharp. So we just want to see you, you know, within the box. Okay, then to be heard as well. Um, a great tip is to kind of just record a little bit and see, you know, have I got it? Has, is my device working? Before you do your best beautiful work and it's like, oh, I didn't quite get it. Um, so let's play a little fun game if you're up for that of like the things, the, building our little toolkit for a self tape. So I'm gonna call out something and I want you to try and find it in the time frame. Does that sound cool? Yeah? Okay, so the first one, source of light. You have 10 seconds. Go, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Boom, nice. Okay, you did not need that 10 seconds. And just so I'm not cheating, we've got ooh, mine here. And also a mine here. See that difference? So when I say source of light, that can mean a window. If it's daytime, that is almost like the best lighting that you can get and you wanna be facing the window, you don't wanna be facing away from it. That's really important so we can see nicely. So facing the window, but you know, if it happens to be dark, seasons change, or it's the evening, then these kind of sources of lights, those lamps that we were seeing work really well. Okay, what else? So space. So Kira and Dalu, I know that you're in a beautiful space right now, but thinking about the pieces that you're doing, can you do a quick scan and see what other space could work really well for your monologue, okay? You've got five seconds now, because 10 was too much. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, okay, okay. So, oh, I like it as well, that Kira, that you've kind of positioned yourself not necessarily central. There's mm -hmm. space for you to maybe, scope for you to maybe move if you wanted to. Um, Dalu, where is the window compared uh, to where you are? So the window is right in front of me. Okay, brilliant. So at the moment, that is a good position. We can see a bit of shadow, but sometimes that happens. Perhaps could you like try experimenting with me moving forward, stepping forward? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see instantly there's a change there? Ooh. So we can always play with how close we are to the source of light and what really makes that sharp. Um, brilliant, so, uh, so we've gotten covered source of light, space, and that's like environment. Um, can anyone think of anything else? Um, my tripod stand. <laughs> yes, yes, what do we film the tape with and how do we do it? So um, cameras are like just an iPhone camera or something like that is really great or a camera or an iPad. Um, but then how do we hold it up? So you have three seconds <laughs> to show us how you would hold up your, your device. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Do you want to talk us through what you're holding? All of you. Dalu, do you want to go first? Um, yeah, so what we have here is um, a pink van slash coach, um, a couple children's books as well, just to keep it level. And yeah. <laughs> nice. So artistic. Marcia, what about you? I have a whole heap of boxes because everyone had loads of deliveries over COVID. So I've kept all of the boxes from the deliveries <laughs> that are really good and strong. So I've, this device is currently on three delivery boxes and this is an extra one in case I want to deliver standing up. And it was taco boxes during COVID. <laughs> taco boxes was perfect height for me. Because the other thing I have to think about is the furniture that I'm sitting on. 
yeah. and the camera being at the right height especially if you're going to sing you know you never know it's good that the camera is opposite where you're vocally delivering uh, it can really make a difference with the um, yeah. frequencies and things so these are really but i've got a whole selection that's a great great tip tackle boxes kira so i've got a chest of drawers <laughs> love it um because i'm actually filming well i'm with you guys at my mum's house which i thought was kind of actually a bad thing at first because it's not my space and not where usually where i would do auditions or self takes but actually thinking about it you can get a recall at any time and it can be due in so quick so i've taken the printer of where it lives and i've got a sort of blank wall and a chest of drawers <laughs> yeah yeah that is so realistic actually because um yeah so an example for me is whoop, this thing over here um so this is you know these um resources that i have oh, here's one as well this is a backdrop so these look pretty fancy and high tech um got them from amazon but actually truth be told is you can be caught out this is a true story and you have a tape in and then what do you do it's not even a space you're familiar with how do i build so just take that pressure off you don't need the fancy equipment you have it in your space just get creative and and again that's finding the fun and joy in it exactly all those gadgets why don't we see um an example of i've got, I've got a little montage for you of some true to life self tapes that I have done in the space of a few months. Um, so again, taking on the things that we've just uh, discovered, spot the similarities, um, spot what you liked, what you hadn't tried before and things like that. Now, I would love to show the actual dialogue and speech, but for copyright reasons, we're not gonna do that, but just take my word for it. It was like, the acting was great. But yeah, so that's gonna play. So here again, you can see the background is quite plain. And in the industry, neutral is usual, usually a really good color to go with. But oh, hey, we've changed it up with a blue. And it's always good to think about your complexion and what stands out that doesn't detract from you because you're more important than your backdrop. So, you know, things like photos, if it's not kind of relevant to the character, try and get rid of that. But here you can see this is my little pop up thing and sometimes you don't need that so just a good old corner in your living room will do and some people also have curtains. But you know sometimes you could even go for outside if that is relevant to the piece and it's not too noisy doesn't interfere with that being seen and heard why not. And that's that. Round of applause, please. No, no. But it's true to demystify because the one thing that I know that we, we spoke about as, as associates is it doesn't matter as long as you're comfortable in your space and use a settee, use a chair. It's brilliant. You've got that resource there, it, you know. But the most important thing, as we were saying, is choosing something that is relevant for you in the moment that you want to audition. And we need to remember that we don't just audition with monologues anymore. We can uh, audition with, with poems, we can audition with um, original stories. It's about what writing actually appeals to you. But I think there were some tricks that we're gonna look at now that are relevant for, for whatever you're performing. Now for me, I don't know about anyone else here, I quite like to know what the journey is within any piece what is the story that you want to commit to that you want to ignite my imagination with that you want to fuel my emotions to come you know into and really uh, be engaged and inspired by the character journey that that, that you're on so i always say what where does the character begin what's the beginning of the piece what's the end most importantly where are you aiming for in terms of climax is the climax at the beginning and therefore, you've got a whole denouement to lead us back out of the climax. Is the climax at the end? So you've got lots of exposition leading us towards it. Or is the climax in the middle? Because you know what? Aim for a really beautiful place and suddenly you've got this great journey that's really clear for an audience. Too many climaxes, we just can't keep up. But, but if you think about the shape of your text. So I'm, I'm going to do somewhere with, with, with Dalu. 
in, in a moment, but always think about, about that shape um, because I think that underpins what, whatever it is that you're that you're going to look at. So we're going to do some work with Dalla and Kira. We're going to get them to show you their their journeys. They've probably thought about that at the beginning and where their climax is in the end, um, but they might not have. But think about that journey. And we're going to see a, a minute uh, of, of some pieces that they have brought in, so we can start to really play and work on some of those ideas, as well as some other ways and stepping stones to get you from that beginning through that climax to the end of your piece. So I don't know who wants to go first, actually, out of the two of you. You want to go first, Kira? Can do. I don't mind. Whatever. Whatever you <laughs> that need. Cheeky. That was cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll meet Kieran when you're ready. Uh, and you know what would be lovely when we to really think about um, what was said about creating that that bubble, that space, and that that place to hold your work with real respect because it deserves it. Here we go. But I do think it is their husband's fault if wives do fall. Say they slack their duties. Hmm. Pour our treasures into foreign laps, else break out in peevish jealousies. Throwing restraint upon us. Or say they strike us. Scan our former having in despite. Why? We have ghoul, and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge? What is it that they do when they've changed us for others? Is it is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. It's frailty, that thus is. I think it too. And have we not affection? desire for sport and frailty as husbands have then let them use us well else let them know the ills we do their ills instruct us so thank you let's pass over I had so many emotions that day, excited, nervous, and utterly dumbfounded as I took a seat on that plane I mounted and for 10 hours we are way up in the clouds and... It's such a peaceful sight. <laughs> the, the irony, I'm scared of heights. I remember being sat by the window when the pilot announced that he's preparing for landing. And as the plane takes a nosedive through the thick fog immersing, and as it emerges, my eyes feast on such foreign views. Mama, mama, that's the countryside. Just like on Sky News. I mean, at least I knew a thing or two. I would have been way more anxious if I didn't have a clue, but I still had questions in my head. Like, who will I become? Will I fit in or will I stand out? Even though you don't know where this journey is gonna take you, just remain praying and never forget where you come from, my grandma said. So when they ask you, where do you come from? Zimbabwe. Oh, Zimbabwe, oh, isn't that where? No, Mugabe. Yeah, true. And now you have a new name to associate that place to. 
ita malami mu talumuzi wena two very different pieces but do you know mm. I, I've got to say something right from the off I, I'm sure you'd agree with me what was really um, beautiful and something to really consider when whatever text you're choosing is the authenticity of the voice that you use making yes. your own voice I think that's so important use your own dialect if you need to you know uh, whether you choose Shakespeare or poetry your your dialect has as much place uh, within that within that that language um, there's something quite exciting about that so if we're mapping the beginning the middle and the end Kira a very quick question for you where's the beginning and the middle of the end where's your climax would you say have a think about that where do you think it is I'm going to ask Dalia this exactly the same question where are you aiming for do you want to answer yeah go on oh, go quickly. where's um, your climax I think I think for me it's the moment where she says have we not affections? Like, is this, come on, like, this is about us as well. I think it's that kind of crux of it there. Okay, nice. Um, and what about you, Dali? Where Where is the climax, do you think, of this piece? I'd say um, when he finally states where he comes from, uh, the place where he's from, I think that's that affirming his identity and just, putting his foot down and being proud of where he comes from as well, yeah. That's the last stanza, isn't it, really? That's exactly. the last stanza of this piece. So you're aiming for the end. So it's all about leading us, all about that exposition towards this space and, and this place. The reason I'm asking that is because that is going to have a major impact on the emotional journey of the character or else the imagery that we're painting in terms of a piece of, 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 of poetry. Um, so I'm, I'm going to work with Dalia, but Kira, feel free to join in in the background and work your piece at the same time so you get something out of the work that we're about to do so it's interesting you said that that climax is at the end so what would you say is the overarching i'm always aware that when we're working with um, poetry we're trying to paint a vivid Im image within our audience's imagination and we do that using something called tone color and tone color colors emotion mm -hmm. <laughs> so what would you say is the overriding emotion that the piece has what would you say it is I'd say it's um, it's very re reflective. Um, so I'd say bright because it, it is good memories. It's it's a it's a, it's a core memory as well. Um, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. So let's look. Let's look at that idea. So if we were to talk talk about that that idea of reflection being being this core emotional driver that's driving the journey, what color would you say that is? What's the color? Do you think? I'm gonna say orange oh okay how bright is that orange is it is it really vibrant or is it a kind of a deeper i'd, I'd say a deeper orange um, okay so yeah. Yeah. okay so here's the big question now because we can we can play the whole piece with deep orange but i always say that if we give too much of the rawness and the pinnacle of emotion in our first line we're already telling them where we're going yeah so we need to understand that reflection has many shades so where does the first stanza start us off? What kind of shade? Is it, is it that richness? And are you getting brighter as you get towards the memory uh, of, of, of your grandma and, and that wonderful saying? Or is it vice versa? Is it bright and light and sparkly at the beginning and it gets richer as you get towards the memory? I'll, I'll probably say, oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, I'll probably say it's rich at the beginning, then it's a very bright, but yeah, it's always there. I like that. Come on, then let's play with that then, shall we? So let's look at this first stanza. I'm really lucky that I've got a copy of it. I feel very blessed. <laughs> I was really early thinking, wow, what a great piece. <laughs> so let's look at the first stanza, okay? I want you now to imagine in your body, if you've closed your eyes to do it, imagine, and Kira, you can do the same with the colours you've chosen. Imagine that colour. And I want you to imagine that colour starting in the middle of your, of your body. And I want you to imagine it moving its way out all the way to the tips of your fingers, down to your feet, that richness and that quality. And then I want you to rise that stanza from that stanza, the first line from the richness and quality of the depths of your body. 
to raise that beautiful tone color. The minute you feel it absolutely filling the whole of you, I want you to take a breath and, and, and just engage that color and enlighten it coming through the words in the first stanza. I'll tell you where to start. I had so many emotions that day. Excited, nervous, and utterly dumbfounded as I took a seat on that plane I mounted. And for 10 hours, we are way up in the clouds. Stop. What does that feel like? You've started now to embrace the vowel quality. The vowel is where is the emotional driver. So I dare you to put even more color in those vowel sounds, in those words, because you've got that beautiful had and day, those A sounds that join at the start and the end of that first line. See if you can do that for me. You ready? Imagine that color again and really embrace and just elongate the vowels a little more and put a bit more emotion into them. See what you can do. Just play. I had so many emotions that day. Excited, nervous, and utterly dumbfounded as I took a seat on that plane I mounted. And for 10 hours, we were way up in the clouds. And now we're in the clouds. Now, here we go. Are you ready for this? We're going to play a little more. It's getting exciting now. And you know what's interesting? You started to capture the rhythm of the text because previously on those commas, there was a sensibility of, of stopping the rhythm and the structure of the thoughts because it's a huge thought, that second one from that second line. It's massive, isn't it? That first, that first line is really short and neat. And then you're exploring this journey going up towards the clouds. And then you've got that lovely and, and then you're going to take it someplace else. So I want you to imagine. The center of your space is that rich, dark color, okay? So imagine, as you're standing there, this is your rich, dark color. As you move through this, this poem now, if you believe the color gets lighter and brighter, I want you to walk towards the wall that gets lighter and brighter. Does that make sense? So imagine the walls around you being light and bright, and you're gonna to move towards those walls, and then you can come back to the center when you feel you want the richness. Does that make sense? Yeah. So your whole room and space is now colour mm -hmm. and you can move. This is nice, Kiri, if you had two different emotions, one side of your room could be green and the other side could be red and you would move towards the emotional quality that you wanted to feel. So your last part of your stanza might be a different colour on a different side of the room. So have a think, Dalio, have a think. You can remain in this space, in this richness, but when do you slightly move out and it becomes slightly lighter and therefore the tonal quality becomes lighter? Yeah. As the color brightens, right? You ready? Here we go. Let's play. From the top? Yeah, go for it. Enjoy. I had so many emotions that day. Excited, nervous, and utterly dumbfounded as I took a seat on that plane I mounted. And for 10 hours, we were way up in the clouds and... It's such a peaceful sight. The irony. I'm scared of heights. I remember being sat by the window when the pilot announced that he's preparing for landing. And the plane takes a nosedive through the thick fog, immersing, and as it emerges, my eyes feast on such foreign views. Mama, mama, that's the countryside. Oh, okay, just like on Sky News. And stop, and stop. Can you feel what's happening? Yeah. You feel though those colors, I, I can see Kira nodding away, the colors are beginning to happen. And then what you would do is once you've explored your room, you would remember the physical journey that you were on in terms of where you went with color and then hold it and just explore it within you, that movement, because the language will still move with you. You don't actually physically need to move, especially if you're self time you don't want to move that, that much. It can, it can be disorientated, you might go off screen, but you can remember that physical journey. And what's really lovely is you've started to play with pace and pause. You started to do some of the things. I always say that, that grammar and you have thought, see, I know this is self-penned, you have thought where every single comma and full stop goes. 
Yeah. You thought about that and you can see. And the minute you start to embrace the idea of the comma being like a, a traffic island or a roundabout, where you kind of are coming towards it, you slow down to see what's coming, but you kind of want to carry on the journey around. So there's a, there's a pacing there that's delightful. You've even started to think about the arm line, the line without the text at the end and extending the vowel and going upwards into the energy that drives you through and across lines. And your full stops are really pertinent on that first line. It's like a traffic light on red. I've stopped and now I'm going to take you again. There's something really beautiful about, about looking at the emotional journey and the colours that you will use because that is going to make you play the whole of your orchestra and suddenly something begins to happen and we start to understand the beginning, the middle and the end of your journey. Yeah, and it also felt like I was in the memory a lot more when I was thinking of each tone, yeah, like I, I felt like it was more me telling the story and being immersed myself rather yeah. than just telling the story. And it's interesting, just very quickly before we move on, we were talking about mood and feeling and emotion and the difference. You just said something really pertinent. You said, I felt as if I was in the memory. That's what you are feeling in that moment as that character. That is the emotional journey of the character. But the mood of a piece can be totally different because the mood is what you want me as your audience to get from that. You could be having the most awful time as a character on stage, but it could be highly amusing for me, the audience. So it's humorous for me, the audience, but for you feeling it's something different and that's okay to understand that difference and to know what impact you want to have on your audience. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important, but that emotional drive is right at the heart and center. And it makes what Marilyn's about to do even easier when you've got that emotional center that you're playing with. Yeah. So. I would say think beginning, climax, end. What's the emotional journey, therefore, that that understanding of the text has? Mm -hmm. And that's a great start on what we are going to do next, which is to look at punctuation. We, we started with that. So, Kira, tell me, do you have scope to kind of move a little bit where you are? Yes. Yeah? I probably can't stand. Okay. Unfortunately, just in the space I'm in. I Not can, a problem. Because you won't see me, but I can like sit down here, move around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are you familiar with the game? I'm sure you are as an NYT member. Stop, start, you know, stop, go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So going through that exercise, how that would work would be that you would walk around the room and I would tell you to start or to go. And then you would be moving. So you feel free to do that now. Mm -hmm. um, that's fine if you're not fully seen. Yeah. Don't worry about that. So if you stand on your feet mm -hmm. and just walk a little bit again, if you're off screen, that's fine. Just come back to us every now and then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I would say, stop. Go. Now this works really well when uh, we're in a workshop or when we're in that session where there's a whole group and, and then we can see that ensemble, which is what we love as part of NYT. Stop. So we've got that, we've got those commands, the stop and the go. Then there's the jump. Jump. Go. Stop. Stop. Ooh, experts, go. <laughs> and now we've got the clap. Clap. Stop. Start. Or go. <laughs> clap. Jump. Okay, so we can actually use that game and work with that in terms of punctuality and our text. So for, for you know, Dalu, you can stay um, standing if, you, if you'd like. Um, for a kind of sit down version, we could go with um, stopping, you know, just kind of do that stop motion. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would be the full stop in this case. And then the go is you doing your text. Um, the comma could be the clap and then continue. And then the jump could be any sort of uh, ellipses, dash, you know, that kind of 
elevation. So let's just give that a go. We're just experimenting. Um, have you got your text with you, by the way? Mm -hmm. so not, yeah, so we're not adding that pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's have a go even with that first sentence. Mm -hmm. So go. But I do think it is the husband's faults if wives do fall. Say they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps or else break out and pee for okay, pause for me. So what was the punctuation of that? Comma. Okay, fine, that's fine. So we've changed it to comma. Let's, um, let's actually change that. So Eva, can you click? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, because that, I don't know about you, that gives me a kind of suspension of kind of like, what else yeah, is coming? Yeah. yeah. yeah? Okay. So we're going to start and then with comma, we've got a click. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you've got that full stop, so remember, this is no longer the game where I'm telling you to stop. You've got the text. You show us that you've stopped. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's yeah. go again for like maybe the first two sentences. Okay. But I do think it's the husband's fault if wives do fall. Say that they select their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps or else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us, or say they strike us, or scant our former having in despite. Why? We have ghouls, and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Pause. So are you, do you mean to tell me in all that, you didn't get a full stop until then? Yeah. Isn't that why it's so important to warm up? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so many commas there. Um, tell me, did you reach a point when you had a semicolon? Yeah, but although I might have a dodgy translation of it, sure, to be fair. Sure, okay. That would make more sense than just we, Shakespeare. We won't tell anyone that. <laughs> we won't tell anyone that. So, for, you know, they are slightly different. So, we could do a yeah. double click if we want, making it a bit jazzy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so what colour did you? did you have when we were going through Marcia's exercise? So for my richer colour, I had like a deep sea blue. And okay. then for the climax moment, I had sort of the palest blue, like all the colour had sort of drained away. Okay. So um, Kira and Dalu, I want you to put yourself back into that colour, that space of that colour, because we're now going to add onto that as opposed to make it separate. And we're going to go through that kind of exercise again. But just kind of be in that mindset of that colour and start to see visually what it is you are saying. We're now just adding layers. We haven't got much time, so we're just throwing it at you. See the world that you're creating. Picture that colour. And then let's do that game again. OK, I'm going to tell you when to pause, so just keep on going. Mm -hmm. Go when you're ready. But I do think it is their husband's fault if wives do fall. Say they slack their duties, pour our treasures into foreign laps, else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us, or say they strike us, scan our former pause, husband. Pause. Great. I could feel, I could almost hear the clicks. Now I want you to visually, for our sake, do that. So oh, okay. As you, were, as you were doing, but with the physicality. Great. But I do think it is their husband's fault if wives do fall. Say they slack their duties, pour our treasures into foreign laps, or else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us, or say they strike us, scan our former having in despite. Why? We have ghouls, and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Carry Do you on. want to continue? Yeah. Let me grab it. Let husbands know that wives have sense like them. We see and smell and have palates both for sweet and sour, as husbands have. What is it that they do when they've changed us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? Okay, pause. I so we're going to go back. We've got some questions there. Mm. So for the questions to embody that, okay, why don't we do a kind of a hand raise? So you know that quick kind of like miss, yeah. Mm. So when you have a question, throw that up. Okay. okay? So yeah. in terms of punctuation, what have we covered so far? We've covered the commas. Yeah. We've covered the semicolons. 
Yeah. The full stop. And again, don't be afraid to really mark that. Okay. Um, anything else that you've come across so far? That is just the question marks left. Okay. Okay. So let's take it back. Maybe that, you know, last sentence, previous sentence or two mm -hmm. from there. Okay. Let husbands know their wives have scents like them. They see and smell and have palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it that they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. It's frailty that thus airs? It is so too. And how do we not... <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go back with those questions. So yeah. kind of like from the beginning, because we're starting to hear the intonation. Um, yeah really stretch like Marcia got us to stretch okay so really let that impulse take okay. you and let that affect your speech okay okay cool. and yeah. so now we're getting driven by the now we're not focused to hit everything and be correct let's just go with the so be on our front foot and go with the text and then whip mm -hmm. in the kind of physicalization when it comes it. yeah Okay. And so, and really animate the world for us now, because again, I'm just throwing this at you because you're there. So we're ready yeah, for yeah, that yeah. next level. Okay, great. Thank so um, paint that picture for us. I haven't heard this speech in a while. So if you're talking about the husband, let's see that husband. Mm. Great okay. work. So let's take it away. Mm -hmm. From the top. Yeah, why not? But I do think it is their husband's faults if wives do fall. So that they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps or else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us or say they strike us or scan our former having in despite. Why? We have ghouls and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Let husbands know their wives have scents like them. They see and smell and have their palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it that they do when they change us for others? Question. Is it sport? Nice. I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is frailty that thus is? I think so too. And have we not affections, desires for sport and frailty as men have? Pause. Woo! <laughs> work out there yeah. how did that feel for you yeah interesting yeah I've never thought about I mean I I I enjoyed that actually because I always find I prefer the non-self tape style of auditions because I'm quite I'm a much more physical person I like to be able to sort of feel myself in my body and react to the other actors in the space and I think when you're just on your own and it's a camera it's really difficult to sort of get into that and I think especially with Shakespeare when actually everything's already written for you and it's all in the punctuation it's it's easy to forget that so I think yeah. that was a really interesting technique I've never done that before and and trying to learn that get to the pace of what the character's saying through physicalizing the punctuation I think it's a really interesting way of looking at it yeah and of course a lot was thrown at you in such little time and you weren't aware that we were going to do that task and that's what can happen in yeah. the redirection part of the auditions yeah um and all that that's not kind of like a test it's not to throw you off guard and if you do find that okay I, or I missed a, a hands up it's totally fine it's just we want to see that you can actually go with that and you're not fighting and you're just trying to find it whether you get there or not absolutely fine but you're trying to we're trying to create something together in that moment um Marcia what did you think how did that kind of develop there was so much drive there and you know what's fascinating when you're putting your hand up on those commas that's exactly what that language makes us feel that 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 shift that change that you know and we forget that that when we're creating people always think about creating physical character kind of separately to the text it's not it's unlocking we unlock language, we unlock stories and make them come alive. And I've got a saying, I say to everyone, don't ever let a text wear you, you should wear it. Mm. You know, drive your vehicle. I don't want anyone driving my monologue for me. Oh, <laughs> God. oh thank you. <laughs> I don't think I trust anyone else who's driving, you know? 
I want to drive it myself and I want to I want to go on that journey and I want the passengers that are coming along with me to to see the mountains and to see the fields and and to understand what the journey is making me feel because then they can enjoy my car and get out of it and say that made me really sad or oh, that made me smile with delight or joy and color emotion physicality understanding punctuation is is so important because you know long lengths of lines tell us so much about the emotional engagement of that character and how they wish to communicate and the shorter the lines are the more punchy it tells us something it could be about dialect it could be about the rhythms in 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 thought it can be about so much so embracing that physically just gives you so much to play with whether you're doing a live or self tape when you can't move much yeah really yeah um, what we started to see there as well is pace without me even having to say that because I was gonna throw on the quicker quicker <laughs> slower but that was happening already and it's so exciting to see again with Dalu's speech of the changes the shifts in tone in mood in color all the things we've been saying that and, and of speed that varying but not doing it for the for the sake of doing it doing it at points that feel kind of natural and times that you've kind of played with it and a lot of the time it's in that speech in that text and what's fascinating is starting to have a sensibility of that that respect for the emotional quality of a vowel and how consonants are, are pushing action that was lovely to see because the minute you started both to engage a punctuation it actually started to engage the quality of the language and the words because it's those words as, as well as us within them that's telling stories with clarity you know, the images you were painting were so vivid in my imagination for the poem. And that's what a poem's about, painting a picture in my imagination. You know, and owning that final sensibility of line, like the frame around the picture. And, you know, and Vakira, when I was listening to you, you were driving emotion that was making me want to come with you. And that's what it's about. I need to play as well. You need to invite me into your into your play and, and enable me to enjoy being a part of that too you know and that's a really difficult thing to do but the spontaneity wasn't there and believability yeah. and truthfulness yeah because we're working from here we're demonstrating working from the inside out so we did that a lot about kind of the mood and how Dalu was feeling or his character um, was feeling inside and how that was being brought out to the surface and then there's also going from the so that's inwards to outwards insides out and then there's going from the outside to the inwards so that brings us on to also thinking about the physicality of that character so um Kira questions that you know we'd like to uh, go through when we're developing our speeches before an audition things like um the w's as Marcia likes to call them so <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, add on to them because I know how passionate you are about this. So the kind of who, the where, the when, mm -hmm. the why. Whom, mm -hmm. whom are you speaking? Exactly, whom. So I'm sure you've done, I, I can just tell that you worked on this piece. So I'm sure you've done all of those questions. Um, for us, could you just give us a quick breakdown about who your character is? Mm -hmm. So my character is Amelia. She's um, during this speech with Desdemona and she's talking about what she's witnessed in the past and Desdemona's relationship and how she's sort of suggesting that, um, you know, if, if a woman does wrong, you need to look at the husband before you start accusing. So yeah, I, I think about it as like it's night, you know, Amelia is less than Desdemona in terms of class um, so I imagine that she's kind of not really supposed to be saying these things um, and is kind of a little bit more forthright in what she believes and thinks that she can just say it and it will all be fine. Um, and where and why and who. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. through all of them. That's quite, quite a lot of information already. Marcia, you can say something. I was going to say there's loads of answers there, but it's interesting that that whom one is, re I'm really quite passionate about that because we always forget to ask ourselves actors, for whom is the line for? Not only to whom is it to, who is it for? Is it for my benefit as the character? Or is it for the other person? Or if it's comedy, is it for the audience? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I might not be laughing at that moment, but I might want them to. So for whom is the line for? Because then it invests a different sensibility of engagement. And that can alter pace as well. So yeah. those W questions open up so many 
boxes and ideas. Yeah. Out of curiosity, how old roughly, what's the age range that you would put that character? Amelia? Yeah. I, I always think with a character, I, I'd choose a character that I think I could play age wise. So in my mind, she's 25, you know, young, but knows what she's talking about, lived a bit. Um, I would never personally choose a character that's really out of my age bracket. Um, just because I think when it comes down to it, you're, you're also trying to be as truthful and as honest as you can. And I think, I mean, I'm not saying don't go ahead and do characters that's like, you know, 90 years old, if you're 19, because there's fun to be had in it. But I think actually in a really short space of time in an audition, you don't have very long to show who you are. Um, and outside of that conversation about, you know, what you're an expert at, you've, you've really only got your speech to show that off. So I think, yeah, in my mind, she's similar age to me and has the same sort of beliefs in terms of feminism and stuff. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Really great point. And we kind of touched on that earlier as well about accents, mm. because I have been known in the past to want to just kind of, you know, <laughs> double in accents, whether they're good or not. Yeah, no. um, and it's true <laughs> when you just have that one piece. We just want to kind of see you. So it's not to say don't do it, but you know, anything that's really close to you in terms of age accents, that's always a good, a good um, shout. Okay, so we've got uh, some background about the character, um, the age. So um, where would you say you as a person, Kira, lead from in terms of, so when you're walking, is that, you know, are you kind of a thinker? Are you leading yeah. from your head usually, yeah. from your chest? I don't go for the first thing I say. <laughs> no, honestly, I sit dreadfully as well. I'm always, and I've been told off about it actually in auditions because I do this, because in real life, I, when someone's talking, I it, it's all here. So that's another thing. If you're doing self tapes, try and think of it as you're not rocking around. Because <laughs> I do, <laughs> right. I would say, yeah, I'm definitely a thinker. But also, okay. all the way up here or all the way down here, I'd say. Oh, okay, right. So from, from the head or to the toe? Is that, yeah, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Emotionally. So now where would you place Amelia? Chest. Oh, yeah. you knew that straight away. Yeah. Okay. So do you mind standing up for me again? Yeah. yeah. And just kind of walking, walking up and down, starting off as Kira. Mm -hmm. So from your head. And then you can play around with that idea of you weren't too sure that it might be the toe. Mm -hmm. Dalu, you can do the same as well with your piece. It's great to see both of you working at the same time. And normally when you're doing this exercise, you could even play with music in the background, music that kind of brings you to the character that you think the character would like, or just reminds you of that character or connects you to that character. There's so much fun to be had, um, especially from going outwards in. So you can think about costume, but not costume in the kind of way of like, oh, OK, clothes and just kind of something subtle, a chain maybe, or, you know, a top that makes you feel like, yeah, that is that is a bit of Amelia. Now, I want you to kind of think about that other position in your body that is your character's position, where they lead from. So just running through, you immediately said chest. Now that gives me the sense of perhaps heart, emotion, but there can be other areas, the tummy, the gut, you know, the, the toes always kind of on the front foot or wanting to go, maybe nervous energy, even the hands twitches. So if there's anything that I've said that feels true, again, just add that, that's fine. Okay, Kira, so, do you feel like you've kind of, you know, it's a tough one because of the frame. Do you feel like you've played with going from you head toe to kind of that chest? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's have a little go of the beginning of your speech. Mm -hmm. And we can even do that as Kira. So I'm going to say um, Amelia when we want to switch to that okay. different area. Mm -hmm. But I do think it is their husband's fault if wives do fall. So this like their duties, pour our treasures into foreign laps, else break out in uh, peevish jealousies or- Amelia. Say that they strike us. Scan our former having and despite why. 
we have ghoul, and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. That has Thank been, you. Yeah. Thank you. So already with that, kind of going back to what we were talking about, about respecting the space, I could tell when, when Kira ended and Amelia began, I could tell that start of the piece. Thank you so much, you do. You've done brilliant work. Thank you so much. Thank you. So helpful. So, so helpful. I think it's really useful to, to give some tips and advice and different ways of working that could potentially work. I know, you know, silly things like when we go back to colour, if you don't know what colours fuel emotion, to think about what yellow means to you and blue and say your whole, spe whole speech in yellow, say your whole speech in blue, say your whole speech and, and you'll start to find those, those things that resonate with you, you know, just to have all of these ideas and to play because no way is right or wrong and you can always change the direction you're going in. We sometimes forget that. We make a decision and we're on that road and it's like we can't turn off. Mm -hmm. um, but actually the most fearless thing you can do is turn off and see what that road's like because you can always come back. You know, whatever you've worked on is going to build that character. So here we go. How about then turning it back over to you two and saying, OK, talk to us about because for me, I don't know about all of you. National Youth Theatre is a really special place for me, a really special place and has been for many, many years. So what is it for you being National Youth Theatre members about your experiences and your advice? that you could give you know what's been your journey your trajectory and, and what makes it maybe as special for you as it has been for me and I know that Marilyn you have a, an experience as an NYT member too so yeah. your voice is in, important also your fancy is going first I can I can go first all right <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, yeah that's such a loaded question but I'll, I'll try and answer it the best I can um yeah, so coming from a place where I'm probably like the only creative in my family or who, who's out there anyway, you know, claiming that they're creative. Um, it's nice having this space where it's like-minded people. It's people where you feel comfortable with, where you feel safe, where you feel heard. Um, I didn't get much of that growing up. Um, and just joining NYT and being part of that was, it, it's really a, a feeling that you, you can't describe until you're there, especially if you're really passionate about what you're doing. I think being in a place where you just look around and you see people who have same age or, or similar, and it's just, you, everyone's just there in that moment. And it doesn't matter what's happening at home. It doesn't matter you know the issues that are being had just when everyone gets together there's this sense of community there's a sense of family there's this sense of like belonging and I, I can't commend the National Youth Theatre enough for that for giving me that opportunity in that space because it's given me the confidence to pursue more stuff it's given me um just that platform where I feel like you know what yeah I, I, I do belong here and yeah I'm, I'm gonna try and make something of myself, you know, being here. So yeah, it, I, I can't on, honestly give affirmations to why joining MIT would be, would be a great thing, yeah. Kira? I don't really know how to follow that. <laughs> um, no, I mean, obviously I agree with all of that and a million times more. Um, but for me personally, I think, it is the ability NYT have, um, and I suppose the ethos that it lives by to just completely celebrate individuality. Um, you know, it's not about everyone being the same or being perfect or, you know, <clears throat> working you down until you're this amazing, brilliant actor. It's just about the fact that no one else is you and you are, like offering something absolutely no one else in the world can and I think that's just an amazing thing um yeah I joined NYT in 2017 and I like all of my acting credits on my spotlight and stuff basically have been down to NYT it's the only reason I can actually like proudly say yeah I'm an actor um but it's just the opportunities I've had are absolutely unbelievable you know as just this queer kid who would hang around the house doing accents. And now it's like gonna be at the, you know, 
Theatre Royale Stratford. What? It's just insane. It's just it's just the best, 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 best thing. Um, and also, I think no one comes into NYT as like a main character. I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, but it's all about the ensemble. It's all about the teamwork. It's all about working together. And I think actually, from from the professional work I've done, that couldn't be close enough to what it's like. You know, you're not you you you're there to support everyone and and give but you're only as good as everyone else there and I feel like yeah it's just and I auditioned three times to get into NYT um and I auditioned four times to get into the rep company so don't stop doing it all right wait when you say you auditioned four <laughs> times for the rep company what does what does that mean does that mean yeah. does that mean you're does that mean you're in yeah <laughs> yeah me and dalu did it didn't we so finally yeah I, I just think if if take anything from it like and i i'll be honest it was hard to keep going so hard um and i and i said to my girlfriend like this this is my last go this is my i have to i have to be realistic and i just think actually you can't have that mindset in this world you can't because it's always when you're about to give up that the best things come because you didn't give up, right? So nothing's impossible, just go for it. And it, do you know what? If NYT isn't the thing that happens for you, doesn't mean you, you can't do it. It just means give it another go or try it a different way. Like, obviously we all think it's the best thing in the world, but at the end of the day, it might not be right for whoever for that for that year and then come back and try again and it'll always have its arms open you know um so yeah I agree and um, Marilyn you have a a trajectory that's from a little further <laughs> yeah 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 so it's, it's so interesting both of you can relate to what you've both said um Dalu I also come from a family where it's like I, I want to be an actor <laughs> what's that <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> And I can't even describe the coming out moment because I think it was clear from from when I was young that I wanted to be an actor. Um, but yeah, kind of navigating that and going, what do I do with this? And then when I joined, I don't want to give the game away, but I became a member 2012. So things were a bit different. All these kind of great, <laughs> I'm old Marcia, all these kind of resources that we have, like this session it wasn't really out there at that time so I just didn't really know what to do um, and luckily I found my way to NYT I did audition didn't get through the first time um, but when I did I did have that sense of like yeah this was the time for me to do it I went I did accounting and finance at uni um, and my first year that's when I auditioned again and I was like yeah this is what I'm supposed to be doing but also I've got that life experience and I feel like I'm coming into my own um, and so, yeah, I, I then I did classes. There's other things out there like um, master classes, um, and you don't have to be a member to do such things as well, which we'll talk about later. Um, and I, I was a part of some some shows and performances. I'd be auditioning, um, and then I kind of took a break. I was doing other things, living my life. Did um, a two year course with Fourth Monkey Theatre Rep, and then I was like, okay, I'm at that cast where. I've got like a year and then I'm no longer a member. I'm an alumni. So I really want to get in there and do as many, I know, <laughs> time, time pressure, um, and do as many performances with NYT as I can. So I went for NYT rep. Uh, this was 2018, 20, yeah, 2018, 2019. Um, and luckily got it. And that was my journey. So from not going there, getting in the first time to then doing NYT rep, so then I would never have thought that suddenly I'm a co-facilitator and um, an associate. So it's just been an amazing time. And that's, I just keep learning every day because those jobs do come through where you have to keep battling and going through the challenges of rejection and picking yourself back up. And, and I think I think that experience, uh, I can relate to that experience of, yeah, no one in my family <laughs> performers and they still not. <laughs> so it is you know it's nice a nice affirmation to know there's more than just you yeah. a special <laughs> breed things but what I was saying actually to, to Marilyn there wasn't even any any drama groups 
school. Yeah, crazy. There wasn't even any drama at school. But you know, as you said, there are lots of opportunities. You don't need to be a member to embrace opportunity. The hub, we're not even allowed to have a membership on it. I wish I had. There were some fantastic things on, on the hub to get involved in and, and to, to be engaged with. In fact, I know that we have a small slide presentation of the things that you could do, uh, even though you're not a member, that will still engage you with these, this mass community of wonderfully creative people. Uh, there are week-long courses that, you know, just for five days that you can do, and, and you can see the age groups on the slide there. Yeah, some of them are in person, some of them are online. So it's great in terms of access if you can't reach London, because we're not just aiming at London, we're aiming across the country. Absolutely. So we're never too far away. You know, it's just as relevant to do things digitally uh, as it is to do them in space. Don't see this box as a barrier, rather see it as a creative opportunity um, to free the space, even though it is just here. Um, and this is just July and August. So keeping up with the hub, uh, and looking at the opportunities on there will move you um, forwards. Um, and you can actually now, even now, register your interest to audition again next season. So do it. Don't, don't think about it. Jump. Jump and do it again is what I would say. Yeah, and we have got backstage uh, courses as well. So if you fancy looking into lighting, sound, um, directing even we have really great courses for that as well so have a look uh, because your subscription isn't just about your audition it's actually an entrance point to cr a crazy amount of opportunities um, so that you can keep testing the ideas we played with tonight and new ideas so you're ready to bounce back into your next live audition um, self-tape and hopefully then that live Zoom we call. Yeah, we've had, um, we've had Q and A's up there. Um, I believe Q and A with uh, Daisy Edgar Jones from Normal People. You know, we get uh, people, uh, NYT alumni to come in and run sessions as well, and be part of um, talks and questions, uh, Q and A's, sorry. So yeah, so much to, to explore. Mm. Go check it out. And keep exploring is what I would say. Um, I don't know about you, I, I had a nice time, so thank you. There's something about NYT, I always have a nice time, a creative time that makes me go away and makes me want to think about myself in my journey uh, as well. So I, I want to thank Kira and, and Dalu and, and Mary Lynn for being a great co-facilitator. That's what I love. We don't do things on our own. We do it with another creative and there's always such joy and delight in that learning and the discoveries that, that we make. So that's my thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Okay. And now you've got three more coming. <laughs> Marcia, thank you so much. Um, Kira, Dali, thank you for getting stuck into the work and, and just being brave enough to share your beautiful pieces with us. Oh, thank you so much for having us. Like, I've literally learned so much just from this as well. And yeah, I think just my final thoughts, I'll just say to whoever is thinking of auditioning, just do it. Don't stop because the best moments come from those realizations and from those low moments. And it's just about picking yourself back up and literally just going again. Thank you all. It was so fab. I've learned loads. And I think it goes to show that you never stop learning you know you never stop taking tips and and just yeah so just just smash it you got this um and just enjoy it but thank you so much for having me and thank you for for listening to us and good luck you got yeah, it good luck on the next steps no but most importantly remember kira and dalo are part of nyt rep so go and see what happens when you get into the membership and you start to open the doorways of opportunity because they will be performing out there and you'll be able to go and see them. Go and say hello. I watched your video and see what they say to you. They'll be delighted. I'd be delighted. But go and see the end results of some of the beautiful things that are happening to, with members all over the country um, because it's just as important to go and watch live theatre as well as stream theatre as well as doing it yourself 
So I want to wish you both real luck uh, this year with NYT Rep. I'm sure you'll do all of us really proud uh, on that journey, as we're proud of all of uh, the members that, that come through. So again, thank you to whoever's watching and uh, enjoy your process. That's what I would say. Have fun. Well mm -hmm. done.